it all down, I'm count zero. Now, last time I recorded one of these videos, I said that I had a video upcoming for the video game. Doing my usual plot synopsis and heavy critiques and that sort of thing. Well, that is still upcoming, don't worry. However, in the meantime, there is a news story that came up this week that I felt merits my attention and my, ana my full analysis. In three articles from PCGamer.com, which Rock Paper Shotgun very helpfully summarized, we learned three revelations about the game. One, in order to play the game in any way, single player or naturally multiplayer, you must have an active internet connection as well as be logged into Battle.net. Number two, you can't use mods of any kind in the game. And number three, the game will include a re an auction house featuring purchases with real-world currency. I'm not too concerned about number three. Number three has happened before. It has happened with every previous MMORPG. It has happened with Diablo 2. I really, frankly, expect that if Blizzard didn't do what they're doing here with the real money auction house, it would have happened again anyway. It would have happened here. So, if Blizzard wants to take their cut from the proceeding from the proceedings of all these real money transactions and have control over it, that's fine. More power to them. So that's not my big concern. My big concern though is with numbers one and two. And I'm going to tackle them in reverse order. If you play Torchlight on the PC, you can immediately see the problem with number two. Torchlight added a massive amount of replay value to a game which admittedly was a single player only experience but still an enjoyable one. But by adding the mod modding capability there, players could adjust the interface to how they chose, they could adjust how inventory management worked to how they chose. And that's not to mention the myriad of user created maps and other things added to the game to add to the gameplay experience long past the original um, single player campaign, campaign had been completed. And Diablo as well had a double, double 2 in particular also had a pretty good mod experience in the game as well. So I'm disappointed by this. It's not a, it in and of itself is not the biggest deal breaker. But it is something which I feel lessens the game by its absence. My biggest concern, though, is with number one. First, as much as I wish it were otherwise, broadband internet in the United States is not as widespread as I'd like. There are a lot of people in the U.S. who are limited to dial-up internet connection, not by choice, but because of geography or by cost. And by requiring these pl all players from the, of this game, no matter whether they're doing it single player or otherwise, have a always on connection, you are basically telling a substantial number of people that you don't want their money. And that's unfortunate. Addition, adding to the fact is Diablo 2, particularly later on, as the capabilities of notebook computers increased, Diablo 2 became a really good go-to I'm installing this game on my notebook computer and taking it with me for my flight, for my train trip, for going to a convention or something like that, someplace where you're traveling. It's a good notebook computer game. And that's something that, for that matter, Torchlight recognized by allowing it to run at a multitude of, multitude of different hardware capabilities to the point that you could even run it on a netbook. Sadly, because of this restriction to Diablo 3, it's a game which is no longer in any way laptop friendly. And, fin and finally, but most importantly, there's the whole matter of server outages. Aside from planned downtime, they're generally not expected. You don't expect a server outage. That's why it's sudden and unexpected server outage. And, I mean, Blizzard is no um, stranger to this. There have been numerous problems with Battle.net in the past. There have been problems with, particularly when patches come out or when new games are launched, heavy traffic causing problems for the Battle.net servers. 
And so, basically, if at any point there's a server problem with Battle.net, or with, if Battle.net ever runs into problems, this game will become completely unplayable. And that's a problem. Case in point, when Capcom released Final Fight Double Impact on the PlayStation Network, they included a DRM that required that the player have an always active internet connection as well as be logged into PlayStation Network. Now, I mean, that's fine and all. After all, it's not Capcom's fault if somebody's internet connection goes down, so who cares about them? And the PlayStation Network, the hallmark and centerpiece of the entire Sony gaming setup, it's not like that'll ever go down or any... Aw, oh, crap. Blizzard's official line on this is that the game would be very easy to cheat on if you permitted off, um, offline play and if you permitted mods. The problem with that is that Blizzard themselves have admitted that arena mode is unbalanced unless you're close to the level cap, if not actually at the cap, and if you're doing it one-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. The only way to balance it is to be at, at or close to the cap and to be doing a three-on-three -three fight. They've said this publicly, which means either it's not going to matter because people will have simply cheated to get to the cap, and any other possible cheating they could do would be like, for example, oh, having more skills than they should or anything like that, in which case their characters should be immediately, obviously, uh, um, cheating, and thus there should be very easy ways to put in place to demonstrate that someone's cheating, like if someone has more skill points than they should, if somebody has more health points than is possible at that level, that sort of thing. So, if that's the case, all that remains that they could possibly be cheating at would be at single player, at which point, who cares if you're cheating at single player, except for the person playing at single player, or co-op, which, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, all you're doing is power leveling anyway. So, unless you're concerned about breaking the real money economy, I just don't see this being a, a, a real significant thing as far as the internet connection aspect is concerned. So, Blizzard, if you're watching this, if anyone at Blizzard is watching this, I don't know if you are, you're probably not, but if you are, you have successfully unsold me on Diablo 3. Now, you can get me back. It's not hard. All you need to do is to permit mods in the game and to allow people to play without having an always on internet connection. And actually, I'm willing to be resold on the game if you just restore the capability to play the game without having an always on internet connection. Let the people with, with dial-up back in. Let the people who want to play on notebooks back in. You do that, I'm back in. Currently though, frankly Torchlight 2 is looking more interesting right now and has really caught my attention more than Diablo 3 has. And so currently I am now more sold on that than I am on your game. You can get me back, but you're going to have to change your evil ways. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.